Get ready, get set, for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe, it's the Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves, with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. Welcome back to another episode of the Good Brothers. I'm Alex, that's Mike. We are the Good Brothers, the best podcast in the whole Midwest of the United States, and the whole Midwest of the entire world. And the Midwest of the entire universe. Say hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. That is right, Chicago. The Good Brothers are back with a plentiful news load for each and every one of you. Good Brother, let's get right to it and let's all go to the moon. Mike, we're going to keep getting charged if you keep singing the whole song. And we start off with the number one movie in America opening up this past weekend. Ford v. Ferrari. We call it. And it looks like it is living up to all the hype, making a bunch of money at $31 million. But on top of it, it looks more than ever that Joaquin Phoenix's chances at winning the Oscar at an easy breezy definitely took a hit with Christian Bale and Matt Damon. No, I actually, let's talk about it now. I disagree. I think it went up now because mm-hmm. they're both going to be going for best lead actor, mm-hmm. which history shows cancels each, each other, other out. Mm-hmm. Now, I will give them this, though. Uh, Christian Bale's performance is so good. He might be the exception to the rule. People calling him maybe the best actor of our decade. I kind of agree with them. It'd be fairly very consistent to see how this plays out. Made but we'll a lot keep of money, it. all the awards, the movie, directing, everything. And we will keep talking about Joker in just a little bit. But we move on to the number two movie in America, Midway at three, Charlie's Angels, that opened up this weekend. Mike. Why are men disgusting? I have no idea why we are horrible and we did not want to watch this I movie. I mean, it's not like Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel uh, made a lot of money. It's not like Wonder we're not Woman getting uh, you know, a bunch of female-led movies going forward. Yeah, Black Widow's coming out next year. I mean, it's not like the Star Wars franchise isn't led by a female at the moment. But Elizabeth Banks, you are 100% right. We That is why nobody went to see it's your It's just movie. the fact that, I mean, maybe no one just wanted to see another Charlie's Angels movie. And I keep telling you, she may be a good actress, but nobody likes Kristen Stewart. And, I mean, yeah, the movie's mediocre. It's fine. If Terminator didn't make money, I don't think where this movie got off thinking it would have made money. It's kind of my, you know, uproar. is like, well, movies are expensive. Yep. So I don't blame people for being like, I can probably skip that movie and wait till it's on VOD. At number four is Playing With Fire. At five, Last Christmas. At six, Doctor Sleep. At seven, opening up this weekend, The Good Liar. Made no money. At eight is The Joker. At nine, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Malfeasant. At number ten, Harriet. It's really fast that you hear that story about uh, the rumors that... The- that someone in, a, someone in a board meeting back in the day threw out uh, the story for uh, Harriet Tubman. And they thought it would have been fine for Mrs. Beautiful Julia Roberts to play the lead. And... Julia Roberts obviously has nothing to do with this. This was just someone throwing right, out a out meeting. In, in the company. And the, ex- the reasoning was that was so long ago, people won't remember what skin color she was. And if you're wondering, besides that ridiculousness, that it is Julia Roberts, the great Julia Roberts playing Harriet Tubman. At 11 was Terminator Dark Fate. And at 12, Oof. Jojo Rabbit. Just some names that we want to keep an eye out because we know that all that is coming down. But Good Brother... There's some more movies you could spend your money on this weekend if you're looking for it before Thanksgiving week takes over. Opening up this week, 21 Bridges, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, and Frozen 2. I mean, obviously, the way it goes is I guarantee you that Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood wasn't expensive to make. And it needs to be released for Oscar, and that's why it is. Plus, I think people will go see it, and it'll make a decent amount. Frozen 2 is going to make all the money in the world, obviously. Uh, It's probably going to break some records. And it's smart putting it out now because you're going to get all of this money and all next week's money because people start kind of going on break around Monday, Tuesday. And some people even have that whole week off from school. So very smart. I can't wait. That's going to be – I hear great things. I hear really good things about it for the early, early reviews. So I'm kind of excited. So it is going to be a very interesting weekend. I want to see how the Russo brothers and Chadwick Boseman do outside of the Marvel Universe. I just don't see it doing very well. I hope at least the reviews are good. And maybe that would – because I think you and me have kind of explained like 
Movies are expensive, people. Yeah. Like, it's just hard to get to go to the movies all the time. Even for us who review movies, we have to drag ourselves sometimes because there's so many movies. And obviously, the epicness that it's going to be frozen to, I think it's just a cultural phenomena. It's hitting the, what the first one did. This one doesn't seem to have the same type of momentum that I th- thought it was going to have. I think once it hits and kids are out of school, yeah. that's when you'll see. I think this movie has legs. More than anything. I think the early audience will get it where it needs to be. But it'll make a lot of money throughout the next few weeks. I believe, it'll make yeah, long-term. It'll, it'll make a lot of money. That money. So a busy weekend yeah. for you to spend your money and time with people at the cinema. I mean, we're talking Oscars. This Again, this is going to throw its name in the Oscar pool for Best Animation yeah. in a year with Toy Story. So And and like we were talking about, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, too. So the Oscar the movies are coming down. is going. And it's a full strength. And speaking of Oscar talk, good brother, a certain movie finally hit the billion dollar club. It is the first rated R movie to do such thing, and it is the Joker. Golf clap, everybody. Golf clap, golf clap, golf clap. But like all good things, good brother, the legend of this movie started as a one shot, a artistic movie for artists, something in the vein of Martin Scorsese. Unless you were on the internet from Monday to Tuesday when we found out from the Hollywood Reporter that a Joker sequel is in the works as Todd Phillips eyes more DC origin movies. This is the exclusive that was out from Hollywood Reporter from Tatiana Siegel. And they talk about how Todd Phillips had earned a bunch of money for this movie by the way he did his contract. It's the same thing he did with The Hangover, where instead of taking a guaranteed contract, he got residuals and percentages of the box office and the long term of this movie. So he made a bunch of money doing this. This article also mentions the fact that they will they do have an idea for a part two that the studio did greenlit it and the fact that Joaquin Phoenix is attached to come back as the Joker. They also mention the fact that there will not be any attachment to Batman and this is coming from the Hollywood Reporter like we mentioned. But not so fast my friend because Deadline then responds don't dress for Joker sequel yet. Insiders say Todd Phillips never pitched an origin film series on other DC characters. So what they are mentioning is there is no deal done. There's no plans for a Joker. And on top of it, he never went in there talking about doing a Lex Luthor movie, doing a Doomsday movie, doing anything yeah. like that. Today so- was basically about they, they made up a story. The media ran with the story. And now the story is there wasn't a story, basically. Well, that's, again, that is not... True or false. The truth is somewhere in the middle. The Hollywood Reporter and Deadline are two of the most reputable other than Variety. Those are the holy trinity of of trades. I think what happens is one source was told one thing. Another source was told another. And when you're playing the game of telephone with such a heated IP and movie, this is what happens. Do I think Warner Brothers went to Todd Phillips and said... Do you have an idea for a sequel? Yes. Yes. Is it practice for every major studio to sign their actors, directors, and other people in films to multi-film deals? Nowadays, yes. Yes. So it is not out of the realm of possibility that Joaquin Phoenix does have an option for another movie. That Todd Phillips has been talked with well, for a sequel. The word option gets thrown around so much. Look at The Lord of the Rings where they made this big deal about, oh, The Lord of the Rings is coming out with a thing and they signed on for season two. They're already optioned for five seasons. Yeah. So when you start reading between the lines, you're like, this isn't news. A movie made a lot of money, and these two people are in the family. Of course they went and said, do you think you can make us another billion dollars? I could probably think of something. And Joaquin probably the same thing. You know what? I, maybe I can do another. You know, it's so many maybes and could be's. And I think it's r- ridiculous how the stories come out sometimes. But again, it's just the way it works. I'm like, we're dealing with very creative people. Yeah. And it's a lot harder to really find the story for them, I think, compared to a Ben Affleck who's doing the runs. These guys aren't necessarily doing that all the time just to give out info. So I think what's most important is there's movement, but there's not movement. They're very, 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 very early movement. So we'll see how it plays out. But at the very end, I think what ends up winning out is 
if the studio deems it necessary, they will make another movie. I just don't know if they're going to push forward with it. The one thing I think more than anything, this is bad for Oscar love, what I think for this movie. I think this movie's a lot of its tent comes with the fact that it's a standalone, that it has this kind of mystique to it of like, it's the one black sheep of the family. I think if you get voters this idea, it's like, oh, they're going to franchise it. I, before we even get, for, before it's even out of theaters, that we're already talking about franchising it in, in award season, I think it actually hurts the film. My only argument is Godfather 2. Yeah, I'm, that's the franchise in the 1970s were that, different. That's than, what I'm saying. Like, it, that's, that's the different. only argument there is there have been very successful franchise movies that right. go on to win awards. I don't think it's going to do any damage to it because I think it's, again, it's, it's this is Hollywood we're talking about. Of course, they're talking no, about but, another okay, one. Okay, but this is Hollywood we're talking about. This is, and I've said it before because we saw it with, uh, uh, I'm not spotlight, but we saw it with the movie with Emma Watson, uh, excuse me, Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling. La La Land. La La Land. Where Hollywood loves to masturbate upon itself. Well, it got nominated. Exactly. And my point is, it loves these type of movies. We saw it with The Artist. We saw it with Birdman. It loves being able to kind of have a self-respect, self-retrospective look. And to me, that's what you're seeing a lot with The Joker. It has this cinema. It has this boundary pushing. I think... The quote unquote filmists and cinephiles that have votes, I think to make a statement, if before it's out of its theatrical run and before it's real push for award season that they're talking about franchise sequels, billion dollars, there's a lot of Hollywoodism into this movie opposed to it being this gritty film that we first saw the first week of October. I think it's not crazy to believe that the people who vote certain ways for this Academy wouldn't put it against uh, them. I, I don't think it's crazy. I strongly disagree, and I think this is this is the modern Oscar movie. It's what we're looking at, and I think Joker defines it now, and we're going to look back in years to come to be like, the Joker was the first of that. It's part of a universe, but it's not. It made a lot of money. It's probably going to have a franchise, and it still has Oscar love. I think this will be the first of its kind. So stay with us for any news that happens. If we do find out any news about Joker 2. Oh, it's been set, and it's canceled again. Wait, no, no. And it's canceled. But a movie that definitely didn't get any Oscar love, good brother. It is Justice League. So... Obviously, if you're listening to the show, you're either really plugged into pop culture or you're interested enough to know about Justice League. Zack Snyder started filming it, but it was then finished up by Joss Whedon after Zack Snyder's daughter committed suicide, sadly. Very much the whole Warner Brothers kind of took over with Joss Whedon being the frontman. Yeah. Oh, think of it like a Ron Howard in Solo. Solo, yeah. And I think what's also important to note is I think... Warner Brothers wanted Zack Snyder off anyway after what happened with Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman where they weren't beloved films like a lot of movies that they were trying to compete with in the MCU. But if you've also been on social media fight following Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck and Ray Fisher, you have seen hashtag release the Snyder Cut. We support that. So I will kind of give you the 411 and then I want to get Good Brothers thoughts. The Snyder Cut is an unfinished version of Justice League that Zack Snyder was working on, which means... Technically, we don't know if it's unfinished. Rumor is it's unfinished, but there's also rumor that it is finished. There's the whole point of, do they need money to finish effects or do they need money to release the movie? Well, and here's where I was getting at. There's a bunch of pictures that show people watching it that have a scene of Gal Gadot, who's doing her voiceover work, and it's an unfinished doomsday. So if you're asking me, the movie was not finished because he was kicked off. Oh, no, I agree. No, I I agree with you. I just wanted to put the story out there. That's the two things they think it could be. But I agree with But you. what's more important to what you were saying is what the cost efficiency would be. So if it costs $60 million to finish these graphics, then it doesn't make sense for Warner Brothers to do it. But if Zack Snyder was closer to the finishing of it, and let's say it only cost you 6 to $10 million, I don't think it's crazy not to do it. But regardless of the point, that is what the Snyder Cut is. It is a quote-unquote unfinished version of the movie Justice League that came out. With that being said, is it real? Yes. Yes. But is it real? No. And what I mean by that is... I think it is. I truly think this is all publicity stunt. Maybe. Every director, every podcaster, every news reporter has many versions, many editions of art and work that they make. 
Zack Snyder probably has 10, 15, 20 versions of a movie he made. Release the Alex and Mike original Infinity War <laughs> review. Sincerely. The original 50-minute cut. Yeah, sincerely. <laughs> so that's the thing. Now, do I agree with Good Brother that it has now become a publicity thing? Yes. But from Jump, there's always been a Snyder cut. Yeah. The thing I'm – what I'm essentially trying to say is there's no – in a vault – in parentheses, the Snyder Cut, Justice League, sitting there. I think you're wrong. I actually think now there is. Now, I think when there we wasn't. first got word a few years ago or two years ago when it came out, there wasn't. Yes. And I think over underground the last two years they did it. That's and they true. waited for the they waited for it to be done. I think it's done. I think the movie is finished. Mm. And they're gonna wait because HBO Max, whatever it is, it's coming out very soon. Real in soon. comparison for like a movie release. So I think it's done. And I think they're like, okay, now we wanna start talking about it. Every single member, now including Henry Cavill, and obviously Ezra Miller doesn't have social media, has talked about it. These people are under contract to WB for multiple franchises. They wouldn't let them talk about it if there wasn't a cut. And now all the behind the scene people, all the minimum co-stars that were in for a certain scene. This cut is done. It's going to get released with HBO Max. May 2020 is when HBO yeah. Max comes out. Oh, come on, dude. Yeah, like me and you will call it right now on the show. Now. You truly believe that. It's a... It's all publicity. The last two years were spent finishing it. It's done. And it's going to be released. We'll find out sometime in February. I think when you, I think the tale of it coming it's out. it's going to be sick. Yeah, maybe. Is if we see Zack Snyder sign to a deal with Warner Brothers. It, if we see that, but it's not related to it. If we see he signs a movie deal to make yeah. a new movie for Warner Brothers. That's when I'll say, oh, they're now going to gear is the his promotion. zombie movie through Netflix, Netflix not a Warner Brothers one? I don't think it was called the strip. It's a uh, Netflix film. Okay. I don't know who they called the strip. I, I, like I said, I think it probably is still under contract for something that we just don't know about. No, yeah, I, I, here's the thing. I think it's going to be like a three-hour, 30-minute movie. It's going to be very different. And again, from what we've heard, people have seen it, included and not included, it's much better, and I like the Justice League. And for me, what's more interesting is you're doing this when Wonder Woman is about to come through. We have this new Batman, Suicide Shazam, Squad is coming. Or Black, Black Adam. Adam. So to me, it's like, is this distracting or is this pure genius to have this an exclusive HBO Max, Warner Brothers, Green Lantern deal? Corps will come out? And so we'll I've, see. I've been saying, we'll see. called it here a year ago, and I call it every year, Henry Cavill will play Superman Which he did say at least seen. one more time. And I think this movie will set it up because then The Witcher will be out. He does his thing. He's going to film a, a, some sort of Black Adam from a crossover. I hope you're right. And then he'll go do Witcher season two. I sincerely hope that you're right. I just feel it, it, dude. But I feel like he's it's coming soon. So we'll keep our eyes out and see if we ever really do get a release, release the Snyder Cut version of Justice League. It's time to get back to a galaxy far, far away because we got to see the newest episode of The Mandalorian. Good brother, we made a promise to everybody last week that we would not talk about the big thing in episode one. But apparently the internet is just a lawless wild, wild west now ever since Game of Thrones. Poor and, and Europe. Aaron, and everybody now knows. So... Uh, spoiler warnings are now... Baby uh, a, Yoda. Yeah. Baby Yoda, it's it's everywhere. I tried hiding it from the Cohen. Even she found out because everywhere. of social media. Everywhere. So let's get into episode two. I, I adored this episode. It was so much fun between the, the seeing Baby Yoda actually with mm -hmm. the powers. Po force powers. The Jawas was so much oh, fun. Oh, Jawas are hilarious. Nick Nolte, so much fun. I hate some old Star Wars fans because I, I just feel like sometimes they, they're so down on like... You know, the, the prequels and the Ewoks. And I'm like, you had Jawas in the first movie. And, like, no one said anything. Like, yeah. you were totally cool with it. Like, these these little monsters that we don't know what they look like. Like, Shy Guys almost. I love it, though. That's like, what I picture, Shy Guys. They make me laugh. Like, yeah. they're so goofy. But it just amazes me, I feel like, sometimes of, like, what you'll accept in this one. Oh, you know what? Because it's natural effects. Yeah. It's yeah. not CGI. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, you guys are just obnoxious and just, you're going to hate anything with the prequels 
until it's cool not to hate anything about the prequels. What did you think about episode two? It's great. I, it's very short episodes. I like that, though. Which is fine. Yeah. Again, it's hard when you do such short episodes and it's not a binge show, I think. I think we're definitely, uh, it's a deliberately deliberately paced yes. show. Yeah, very much. Like, it definitely is. So, like, we got this mission. Now we're back in space. Okay, now he has his bounty. What does he do now? He's forming a bond with this this infant, this 50-year-old baby, Yoda. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we know it's not Yoda. We don't know it's not we, Yoda. We just don't know it what they're It could be called. a clone. It could be his child. It can be part of his species. But regardless, until we know what it's called, it's baby Yoda. And yes, baby Yoda is cuter than a gremlin. And that is a conversation that I had with Good Brother before he watched the episode. I'm sure he, because obviously in episode one, we know what Baby Yoda now, looks like. Gizmo does have a bow and arrow. Yes. But Baby Yoda now has force powers, which makes him cute. Which I thought I was, I like to say I was one of the first to make the comparison. Obviously, it didn't take long for it, but I was cute, right there. Big old ears. As soon first, as I yeah. saw it, I'm like, it's pretty easy who they really went after. Because it's not like Yoda's cute. Yoda, like Yoda that we know. Yoda's not cute. Yoda's cool. He's cool. He's not but cute. He's not cute. This is cute this is as cute. F. Yeah. And uh, you were telling me that merchandising wise, they did so not. So, John yeah. Favreau came out today with Hollywood Reporter and he was just saying, like, they're like, well, when do we expect Baby Yoda gear? He's like, you know, it's going to take some time because he really wanted to keep everything a secret from the show and really not spoil. And the company was very gracious about it. So, they pushed a lot of publicity and a lot of catalogs because obviously these toys would have been spoiled by then. Yeah. We see it all the time with like Lego what, the, sets and, and the toys movies. for Marvel yeah. movies. Mm-hmm. He really formed the deal with these, you know, producers saying, I don't want anything released yet. So as soon now it's in production. Now we're getting like all we're gonna get all the fluffies and the toys and everything. Right. But they're gonna wait to do a line of them I think until the season's over. So we probably won't see it till next year. So you don't think Christmas season they'll be able to push anything out? Maybe a Yoda. I think that would be the exception. Yeah. I don't see we'll see a lot of action figures, but maybe a Build a Bear special like they do all the time That'd be with great. Marvel. That'd be really Something fun. Like that. Uh, I love the episode, like I said. I love that it, it's very much a video game as uh, cartoon as serialized kind of thing, which we'll get to in just a little bit. I have spoken. But I I love this series. I love the – I just – to me, the connection that Pedro Pascal has done with this little animatronic was so much fun. So cute. Yeah. So cute. And I, what I say about he the 37 – Yeah, what I could say about the 37-minute episodes – it leaves you wanting well, more. Well, this one was only like twenty nine. Yeah, but it just leaves you wanting more. No, it does. It, just, it you, really does. And I, you know, damn you for making me want more. You just want more. It's just and like they said, Star Wars is two for three this year. Yeah. Which they, you know what? They need a nice three for three year, I think. And one of the other powerhouse series on one of the big streaming services, we got to see Watchmen episode five from season one. Holy cow! This freaking show just. When you think you have the answer, they changed the culture. Shout out to CM Punk because this was one hell of an episode, good brother. We saw the giant squid, which I did not think we were going to see. But damn if they did not deliver and how they made a twist. What did you think about episode five? So I think it's smart. They chose the squid finally. So now we know what happened. And they're very smart. Obviously, spoilers throughout the episode to kind of explain you know, if you're not the if you're not a Watchmen fan and you just want to watch HBO show and you're into it, we're going to explain to you that this was a setup. We knew that it wasn't an actual squid from space. Yeah. Because we've seen Watchmen and we're into the lore. But I think for some common fans that just like good television, it was a big swerve to be like, oh, snap, that like this rich guy that we see on this other planet is the guy that caused this. And now we found out, oh, every time we see Adrian, that's a year past. So every time we see Adrian, a year has gone by. From that first scene we see him when he's eating his cake, every time you see him is a year in the future for his world, wherever he's Really? Living. That's why every episode he gets more bitter, more angry, and more impatient. So how does that affect, have have you determined, have they determined how that affects our reality that we're no, living in? No, I don't think, I think, that's a whole, I think that's a B story. Okay. And I think that more what he did is part of the Earth story, but what he's doing now is more him, Mr. Manhattan. I think he's on, they said it's a moon of Jupiter, and obviously I think he's trying to talk to Mr. Manhattan. Yeah. And I think that's his prison. That was his punishment per se and we did see what he was doing with those clone babies that he was throwing up into space that he was making he was using them to yeah. make a sign which is ingenious because you're watching when you and i were At talking first, about last you think week he's trying to get to space no he knew how, he to. Knew how to do it mm-hmm. yeah so i thought that was ingenious but I, that's what you gotta think it's a year every time so he only by the time we see him last episode it's been about what like 
Six years? Yeah. Just from the show. So let's talk a little bit about Looking Glass, who this was his episode. Uh, great character development. Great character development. Heartbreaking beginning. Because yeah. obviously you see him being his tormented. His whole story and, is heartbreaking. Then we see what happens with his wife. We see him being tricked by the Warshack uh, group, the uh, the Calvary. Yeah. It's interesting. And then it ended up being that we were both kind of right. I called it for, for episode one. Yeah. The senator is a bad guy. Did He's you the hear it? The, uh, did you hear him right when he was the mask, or right when he asked him, "Senator, did you, did it click for you, or did you know he was?" The guy I knew the it was him because of the shape of the mask. The senator has very distinct hair yeah. for a reason. But did you for real? Did you? Yeah, actually, yeah, like, I, I, You were sitting there, being like, "That's the senator." That's the senator. Yeah. No, yeah. see, I, I, I was caught was in it. No, I got caught up in the yeah. moment. I thought it was ingenious how they reveal it that's why i was like oh yeah. but snap i had been waiting for the moment that we finally saw okay. the senator yeah. as the bag the quote-unquote bad guy because i don't know if he's the bad guy no i don't think they're the bad guys per se. i don't i think it's like the real life where it's skimming that line of like there really is no bad and good you kind of just have to i think the only person that's truly good in this show is regina king yeah I which think the only person at least is doing it for her the morally the right reason. And I guess the center is bad because when he says, I'll have to kill her and her whole fucking family, to quote him. He's the bad guy. He's yeah. the bad guy. What did you think about looking glass when they do – they because they don't do anything on purpose, uh, on accident in this series. No, she's smart. So when he turns on the screen and they show the gay sex scene yeah. between the two minute men – is that supposed to imply something about looking glass because he's not sure about women himself? Like, I think it is. I think it's imply? one of those things where it's like he's very confused of who he is mm. because at such a young age he was traumatized by yeah. a woman and then this. It all connects. He can't really connect to people. But he did try connecting with the lady from the Calvary, the radiologist. Yeah. So it was weird that he did have an attraction well, to her. But it's also – it's not that he's not charming. I think he's a very charming character at points too because, again, he's very honest. And the Southern – And he's very much yeah. a victim of this yeah. whole thing. Like he's the definition of a victim in the Watchmen universe by this lie and the squid and this – by any means, you see the repercussions of that. And I think it's so intimate and I love it. I hear – you know, the early reviews, they gave six episodes. They said five and six are the best episodes of the season. And so far, I agree. Five is the best episode, and I can't wait for six because I hear six is even better. Do we see Dr. Manhattan? Not. I, you know what? Maybe this is the one at the end because it's nine episodes. So, like, we got our first three arc. Now we're going to get to the end of this arc. I want to see where we get. But I could also see them waiting for the last, very last shot to do Dr. Manhattan because once he comes in, it changes everything. It changes the entire – because I, I feel like next episode is going to be a Memories episode. Which I do love that storyline. I told you, this is my theory about the Memories storyline. That it is all still part of the plan. That Regina King's character is meant to take in those pills at that exact I moment. I agree. I think looking – and maybe even looking glass, it's a triple swerve where like yeah. they're all in on it beside the government. Like maybe they like, have all the new And even men. Silk Spectra's in on it. Like yeah. it's all a show for everyone and like – that's the swerve. I could totally see that. I agree. So we'll be here next week for episode so six. Yeah, Sunday's going to be big. Of Watchmen. Good brother. Wrestling. The WWE Universe has taken over Chicago. Come this Friday when Friday Night Smackdown on Fox takes over Chicago. And then speaking of takeover, War Games is Saturday games. night. Sunday is Survivor Series where we'll see SmackDown versus Raw versus NXT. And it comes full circle on Monday night for Raw on USA. Good brother, before we make our predictions, what are your feelings about one of the biggest weekends in all of WWE, in all of sports entertainment, coming to Chicago? I'm, I'm just really excited, and I can't wait to get to it already, honestly. Like... I, like, obviously, it's Chicago Survivor Series, the first year with NXT, the first year with Fox and SmackDown. Like, do, I don't think we can say any more to describe. This is huge. This is extremely big. This is the first big pay-per-view, first pay-per-view after NXT became a brand. And we have a takeover. And Friday is now is our SmackDown on Fox. And this. And we have a competitive company. Let's see what they do. This is one of the major four. It's one of the big oh, ones. And their UK just sold out too. So for Blackpool 
for two. NXT two, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, takeover. So, so crazy. super cool. And I love that Chicago is once again the center point of it. It's wonderful. Next week, AEW is going to show. Be here. Hey, by the way, one day after you guys leave, we're coming. So we'll get into some AEW news. Uh, right now, actually, we'll get to AEW sh- uh, news right now because it's not a lot. The only thing I want to say about AEW, they have the name Bash at the Beach. That's kind of cool for nostalgia. They got like Dusty Rhodes, Bash yeah. at the Beach, a bunch of stuff. We get it. You're WCW. Me and Mike obviously are in the middle about AEW. We love the main event scene, and yes. we think they're really dropping the ball and everything else. Yeah. But the top but two, we watch because it's our job. But like those top two storylines, yeah, yeah, they're, they're great. They're great wrestling. Of so, course. but we'll have more AEW talk next week when they're here in Chicago. But good brother, we'll go to the first show I'm going to be at. I will be at Friday Night SmackDown this Friday. So let's move on to one of the events that never lets down. Every NXT TakeOver has been an 8.5 or higher, and it is going to be no exception this Saturday, I believe, as NXT War Games 2019 Chicago takes place. As we're recording this behind the fourth wall, we are actually watching NXT right now, so we have not seen the exact main event that happens on that show, but this is the card that has been released. How about this? Pete Dunne versus Killian Day versus Damian Priest. The winner takes on Adam Cole for the NXT Championship at Survivor Series. Who do you got, good brother? Pete Dunne, Killian Dane, Damian Priest. I'm going to go Pete Dunne. I'll go Pete Dunne as well. Matt Riddle versus Finn Balor. Finn, we agreed, right? Finn, Finn. OC gets involved. That's what's going to go against Undisputed eventually for Finn Balor to get the title. And whichever way, I think Finn ends up winning this, though. Undisputed era. Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roger Strong versus Tommaso Ciampa, Keith Lee, Dominic Dijakovic, and whoever is going to maybe be announced tonight as recording. Velveteen Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream. Okay. Uh, Who wins? Good guys. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa has to win. It's too early for him to lose. And uh, Undisputed won last year anyway, so it's pretty easy to book, I think. And probably the main event, the first ever women's war games match. Yeah, I think that would be the main event. Rhea Ripley, Candice LeRae, Tegan Knox, and Mia Yim versus Shayna Baszler, Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, and Kayla Ree. I got to think they're going to put Baszler over because she's definitely not winning Sunday. Baszler you know wins. What? I, you know what? Honestly, I could see her losing Saturday and beating Bailey on Sunday and maybe set up something with Becky eventually. Shayna Baszler's team wins. Dakota Kai costs the good guys. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll go with it. Either way, we both think the pride the... Yeah, okay, I'll go with it. I agree. I'm trying to change my mind midway, but I think I'm agree with it. And the amazing fun weekend continues, good brother, because it is time for brand representation and dominance for Survivor Series. Adam Cole versus, I guess, Pete Doon. We're going Adam Cole defense and keeps his championship. All right. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan for the Blue Universal Championship. Uh, Obviously, the Fiend. The Fiend. Which, you know, it doesn't matter. Daniel Bryan's like the only guy in the world that could take loss after loss, but such a good character. And I think they're going to push the storyline a little further, too. AJ Styles, your United States champion, Versus Shinsuke Nakamura, your intercontinental champion, versus Roderick Strong, the North American champion. Roddy. Got? I got Roddy. I think Roddy, because Roddy would be the first one they move out of Undisputed to the main roster, I think, because he's got the age and the experience. And he's been there the longest in NXT. I think Roddy's going to get a big push from AJ and Shinsuke, and I can't wait. Like They've really been booking him strong. It is time for our five on five on five. Men's Survivor Series Triple Threat Elimination Match. It is Team Raw, Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Ricochet Stacked. versus Team SmackDown's Roman Reigns, Mustafa Ali, Braun Strowman, King Corbin, and Shorty G. Low key stacked. Versus Team NXT, who they haven't announced yet. I think it's all going to determine from Saturday, or maybe we'll get it at the end of tonight, but they're all fighting within. It's going to be hard to see. Roman wins. Uh, depends who's from NXT. It depends. Maybe Kevin Owens makes a swerve. I Unless mean, King Corbin I could totally see Kevin Owens swerving and maybe going to NXT. I Ooh. think we get one superstar jump to NXT. It might be Kevin Owens done. I think it might be. So, who are you going with? I'm going to go NXT. I'll go NXT too then. Okay, I'll, I'll go if with you. If not NXT, let's take NXT out. I think it would be SmackDown. It, it would be Roman. All right. Yeah, how, now, Fox. Yeah. Five on five women's Survivor Series triple threat elimination matches. Team Raw, Charlotte Flair versus Natalia. Versus Asuka, Kari Zayn, and Sarah Logan. Versus Team SmackDown's Sasha Banks, Carmella, Dana Brooke, 
Lacey Evans and Nikki Cross versus Team NXT, who's yet to be determined. NXT. I think that's the one NXT will get. I will if go I had to with. guess, SmackDown wins the men's, women win I'll go with Team Raw. Charlotte Flair is going to win that match. We'll see. Now it's time for some more brand supremacy. It is the Viking Raiders, the Raw Tag Team Champions, versus the New Day, Big E and Kofi Kingston, your SmackDown Tag Team Champions, versus the Undisputed Era's Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, the NXT Tag Team Champions. Mm, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm going Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders. I could see interference by AOP, though. And maybe... The show stealer, the Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, versus the SmackDown Women's Champion, Bayley, versus the NXT Champion, Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler chokes out Bayley. I'll go Shayna Baszler as well. But she chokes out Bayley. We're going to eventually get maybe at WrestleMania, Shayna Baszler versus Becky. I think Shayna Baszler will be the one to dethrone Becky from like that top spot. And in either the opener or the main event, it is the no-holds-barred match for the WWE Championship Brock Lesnar versus Rey Mysterio. That's going to be opener, and Brock's obviously winning. Brock wins. Kane comes back out, some stupid if like If this that. main events, there's going to be some chaos. Yeah, I don't think it main events. I think it opens. If Oh, I mean, of course. That day of, once you see the order of everything, you're like, okay, I can now have my guesses change. But from right now, I think it opens. I think it's just going to be Kane right, comes if out it opens, and up Brock, and that's it. If it opens, what happens? I think I, I think regardless of the same thing, okay. Kane Velasquez just comes out and messes up Brock Lesnar. That's why it's not main eventing. I'll put it on the table. It won't main event. I'll go with Brock Lesnar, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ray wins. Ray, no, yeah. Brock wins from disqualification. Kane Velasquez is coming out, obviously. But that is it. I will be at all four shows. The Good Brother might be at one. I am super four. excited for this huge weekend in the WWE. Huge. Finally, good brother, before I get out of here, I want to make sure I let everybody know that you could watch me play Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order on twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. I am loving this game. It is super hard. Good brother, have you heard any good things about Star Wars? I Jedi hear great Fallen? things. That's why I said two for three. The game is supposed to be very, very good. Loving it. So make sure you guys watch that. But good brother, that is it for this episode of The Good Brothers. Any final thoughts? Final thoughts. Make sure you follow us all over social media. He's on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. I'm at Mike and Media. We're on Instagram. He's at Mercado2121. I'm at Mike Mercado Media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwave. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. Subscribe to us wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves where you can support us and support Alex's nasty habits. And of course, we're on Twitter at Good brothers pop for the good brother himself alex mercado adios i'm mike mercado we'll see you on the next episode of the good brothers here on the mercado airways network thanks for joining us here on the good brothers here on mercado airways enjoy our shows follow the mercado airways crew all over social media like us on facebook at mercado airways on instagram nicole is at typing win tipsy alex is at mercado 2121 mike is at mike mercado 2333 and our true crime show is at murder mysteries and more and on twitter nicole is at typing win tipsy alex is at mercado 21 alex and mike is at m mercado 2333 you can follow the network at mercado airways follow our pop culture show on twitter at good brothers pod get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast like itunes soundcloud podbean stitcher and other popular sites just search us at mercado airways while you're at it please like rate review and share us with your friends visit us on youtube.com slash mike mercado 2333 click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted support mercado airways by visiting patreon.com slash mercado airways the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities which you can get ad free and early before it's released to the public come play video games with us on twitch twitch.tv slash mercado airwaves network mercado airwaves is powered by munch art design like them on facebook at munch art design voiceover work on mercado airwaves is performed by josh fox
Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airways crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airways, on Instagram. Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy, Alex is at Mercado 2121, Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333, and our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and More. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy, Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex, and Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airways. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airways. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airways by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airways, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airways Network. Mercado Airways is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voice over work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the, the opera to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, sir. I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support.